Hi friends today we will study water we will study this chapter in two parts let us start with the first part water is liquid which forms rains and fills rivers lakes ponds and eventually the seas and oceans water is one of the most common and useful thing around us water is essential for life as all the living things need water to live without water they will die we human beings too cannot live without water and we need water for drinking cooking food washing clothes and utensils bathing etc let us understand the uses of water domestic use of water water is used in homes for drinking cooking washing clothes and utensils bathing cleaning floor flushing toilets and watering plants these are all domestic uses of water agricultural use of water water is used in agriculture for growing food water is needed to grow all kinds of plants which provide us food the growing of plants like cotton and jute which gives us fiber needs a lot of water the water requirements of food producing plants are very high hence the largest amount of water is used for irrigation of crops in agriculture this we can understand from the fact that about 1500 liters of water is needed to produce 1 kg of wheat grains from the wheat plants and 4500 liters of water is required to grow paddy plants which finally produce 1 kg of rice grains industrial use of water the making of paper cloths medicines chemicals bakery products and many other things in industries require a lot of water example making of a one page of a regular textbook consumes about two glasses of water in the paper mill water is used to keep the things cool water is used in the radiators of vehicles like cars buses and trucks to keep their engines cool transportation water in the rivers and seas is used for transporting passengers and goods from one place to another by boats sailing boats motor boats and ships dispersal of seeds of several plants and trees water of rivers and the sea helps in dispersal of seeds of several plants and trees the seeds of various plants and trees located near the bank of rivers and seashores fall on the water of river and the sea these seeds float on water and are carried away to far away places when these seeds reach the land they germinate to produce plants and trees in that area generating electricity at a hydroelectric power plants water stored in a high dam falls from a great height on a turbines of water wheels these turbines then rotate very fast and run the generators which produce electricity at thermal power plants water is boiled to make steam the high pressure steam turns the steam turbines the rotating steam turbines in turn runs the generators which produce electricity where do we get water from the place from where we get water is called as source of water the water which we use is obtained from the sources such as rivers lakes ponds wells and springs the water which we get in taps in our homes comes from rivers lakes dams or tube wells the water drawn from these sources is purified and made dirt free and germ free this water is then supplied to our homes through a network of pipes let us now understand where the water comes into rivers lakes ponds and wells the rivers get their water from the melting of snow lying on the peaks of snow mountain called glaciers and also from rains lakes ponds and wells get their water from rains thus the two major sources of water on land are glaciers and rains the water formed by melting of glaciers is very pure in the beginning but it gets contaminated with impurities when it comes in the river rain water is the purest form of natural water it is not salty and is suitable for drinking rain water also becomes contaminated and impure when it flows into rivers and lakes some of the rain water falls on the earth seeps through the soil and goes down under the surface of the earth this water is stopped by some hard rocks and collects there 
This underground water can be taken out by digging a well into the ground. It is called well water. The well water contains some dissolved salts in it. Also, it may contain some germs in it. The water of deep well is usually fit for drinking. The place where underground water comes out on the surface of the earth on its own is called a spring. This water is also fit for drinking. All this water from rivers, lakes, ponds, wells, etc., is a fresh water. Friends, more than two third of the earth is covered with water. Most of this water is in oceans and seas. The largest source of water on the earth is oceans. Water in the oceans and seas has a large number of salts dissolved in it, due to which the ocean water is highly saline or salty. Being highly saline, this water is not fit for drinking, other domestic purposes, agricultural or industrial needs. Oceans, however, play an important role in supplying the fresh water which we use. It is from the salty water of oceans that we get non-salty fresh water by natural process called water cycle. It is the water cycle in nature which converts highly saline ocean water into pure water which then freezes to form snow on high mountains, falls on the earth as rains, flows into rivers, fields, lakes and ponds and also seeps into ground to provide us well water. States of Water Water cycle is very important natural phenomenon which we will be studying later in this chapter. But we should first know the various physical states of water. Water exists in three major states. Solid state which is ice, liquid states which is our normal water and gaseous state which is water vapor. Water can be changed from one state to another by heating or cooling. When ice is heated, it melts and changes into water. When water is cooled too much, it freezes and changes into ice. Similarly, when water is heated, it evaporates and changes into water vapors and when water vapor is cooled, it condenses and changes into liquid water. During water cycle in nature, water goes through changes of state. Actually, water cycle in nature involves many physical processes such as evaporation, transpiration, condensation, freezing and melting etc. Before we understand the water cycle in nature, we will first understand the various processes involved in it. Evaporation and Transpiration When we spread wet clothes on rope, they dry up after some time. The water present in wet clothes seems to disappear. In this case, Water present in wet clothes evaporates by receiving heat from the sun or surrounding air to form water vapors. The changing of water into water vapor is called as evaporation. Similarly, water spilled on the road, water from the wet roads also dries up due to evaporation. Water needs heat to evaporate into water vapor. This heat is provided by the sun directly or by the surrounding air which has been heated by the sun. The water from the oceans also evaporates due to sun. The process of evaporation of salt water of the ocean does not carry away the salt with it. The salt is left behind. Similarly, the heat of sun evaporates water from the rivers, lakes, ponds continuously to form water vapor. This water vapor goes into the air. The water vapor becomes a part of the air but it cannot be usually seen. In addition to evaporation, there is another process which puts a lot of water vapor into air. It is called transpiration. Loss of water by plants Plants need water to grow. Plants take this water from the soil. Plants use a part of this water to make their food and retain some of it in their different parts. The remaining water is released by the plants into air as water vapor through the small pores in their leaves. The loss of water from plants as water vapor through the pores of their leaves is called transpiration. The process of transpiration puts a large amount of water vapor into the air. Thus, water vapor gets added to the air by the process of evaporation and transpiration. Evaporation of water takes place 
from oceans rivers lakes ponds and soil whereas transpiration occurs from the leaves of plants and trees so water vapor is always present in the air formation of clouds or condensation condensation is the reverse of evaporation we can see this process of condensation of water vapor to form liquid water in our daily life if we take out a bottle of water from a refrigerator and keep it at a room temperature we will see small droplets of water formation on the surface of the bottle this happens because the water vapor presents in the air around the bottle cools and condenses when it comes in contact with the cold bottle we can see tiny dew drops on the leaves of grass on cold winter mornings the formation of dew is also due to condensation of water present in the air the process of condensation is involved in the formation of clouds in the sky and bringing back water to the earth in the form of rain the water vapor formed by the process of evaporation as well as transpiration goes into air this air containing the water vapors is heated by the sun this hot air is lighter than the air hence it rises high up in the atmosphere as we go higher and higher from the earth surface the temperature decreases it gets cooler and cooler when water vapor rises to high altitude in the atmosphere it gets cooled and condenses to form tiny water droplets these tiny water droplets keep floating in the air in the sky and appear as a clouds the tiny water droplets join to form bigger droplets of water these drops of water fall on the earth in the form of rain during winters in very cold regions the water drops in the sky freeze to form snow so the water falls in the form of snow on the earth in this case this is called snowfall sometimes the frozen water from the clouds also fall on the earth in the form of round small pieces of ice called hail thus in short water present on the earth forms water vapor by the process of evaporation and transpiration rises high up in the sky gets cooled condenses and comes back to earth as rain and snowfall we will discuss further in a while rain and melting of snows replenishes water in rivers lakes ponds wells soils and oceans water back to the oceans only a little amount of rain and snow water is available to us in rivers lakes ponds and as ground water most of the water sooner or later goes back to the oceans almost all the places on land are above sea level and since land is at higher level than the oceans water can flow from land into the ocean the snow which falls on high mountains melts slowly and flows down the mountains as streams and rivers some of the rain water which falls on the land also goes into the river most of the rivers after traveling long distances finally fall into sea or ocean this is how most of the water from rain and snow falls into the ocean all the rain water however does not go back to the oceans some rain water also flows into lakes and ponds to fill them some of the rain water which falls on the earth seeps through the soil and goes under the surface of the earth this seeped water is stopped by some hard rocks and collects there this water becomes available to us as ground water we get this ground water by drink, digging wells and tube wells or by installing hand pumps thus we can say that water which was initially taken away from rivers lakes ponds oceans and soil etc by evaporation and transpiration is finally put back into them this happens over and over again leading to water cycle in nature friends that's all about first part of the chapter water in second part of this video we will study water cycle in nature and rain water harvesting thanks for watching this video hope you liked it please do like share and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get notifications on new videos thank you and all the best